two and a half hours of chills and hills. Here's my experience at the 2023 Jeff Galloway Half Marathon in Atlanta, Georgia. Hello Geeks and welcome back to Running Geek Girl. My name is Heather and I am glad you are here. I just finished running the half marathon held by Jeff Galloway in Atlanta, Georgia. This is one that he used to hold in December and this year has started moving it to March. I believe this was in an attempt to help uh, kind of give more agreeable weather. However, we kind of have a cold snap here in the south right now and so we had freezing temperatures. However, this didn't stop any of the 500 plus half marathon runners plus we relay teams from showing up at the starting line in Midtown Atlanta so that we could run the half marathon together. So let me just kind of walk you through what happened through the weekend. Now Atlanta is about seven and a half hours away from where I live so I was able to drive up the day before and get there early enough to pick up my bib. Jeff has two running stores both called Fidipides that sponsors the race and this is where I went to pick up my bib. Bib uh, pickup was extremely smooth very very well organized and so I decided to just take a look around the store at everything that was there. I got to have my picture taken with the Olympic torch that Jeff himself got to run with so that was a great photo opportunity and of course all of Jeff's books are for sale so that if you want to do Galloway training then you have a physical copy of the book that he put together so that you can check it out for yourself. I was able to stay with some friends that live just outside of Atlanta, got to spend some great time with them and then got up the next morning to absolutely frigid temperatures. It was so cold outside you guys. With the wind chill the temperature was around 20 degrees Fahrenheit and it pretty much stayed that way through the entire time I was out on the course and there were definitely some stiff breezes that came through every time the wind blew it was just something else to deal with. Okay here at the starting line we're all starting to get into our corrals on the, uh, the second of the three corrals and it is so cold you guys I like I want to cry every time the wind blows it is so cold out here hoping to warm up really soon we should be getting on our way soon I was so cold at the starting line that actually for the first few minutes that I was there, I didn't even realize that India was the MC for the event. If you have not followed India, I'm going to put a link to her channel down below, Miles from India. Y'all, I ran up to the stage to say hello to her. Um, I, I was wearing my Running Geek Girl cap. You know, I ran over and I said, India, I love your channel. And she was like, oh, I can't believe you're here. So y'all, she is so nice. You, If you haven't checked out her channel, please do. You're absolutely going to love her. But as you can see, plenty of people still showed up at that starting line because we were ready to go. The vibe there was incredibly accepting. Everybody was just there to have fun and go for a run. There was not really a competitive air. It was just really about coming together and enjoying the sport of running. The race had set up pacing groups at 15 minute intervals going all the way from, I believe, an hour and a half finish all the way up to a four hour finish. So you could latch on to any number of pacing groups and just kind of keep ahead of where you needed to be. So if you had a goal time in mind, then you could do that. There were not uh, a whole lot of people that were apparently aiming for any type of a goal time. We were really just out there to get out there and see what we can do. And that's kind of the attitude that I went with. I was just going there to kind of enjoy the scenery and kind of test myself a little because I did my pacing strategy a little bit differently than I normally do for a half marathon. So normally what I will do for a half marathon is I will use the Galloway method and pace it at a four minute run to a one minute walk. However, with all of the training that I've been doing this spring, working on speed and endurance and just kind of building up muscle and uh, mentally training myself to, to deal with things for longer, I decided that I was just going to see if maybe, just maybe, I could run straight through. And so that's what I was headed for because I knew that in the event that things went badly, uh, maybe I wasn't able to uh, tackle hills or something like that. If uh, things were just not going well, I could always switch back to that four and one. That's something that I'm consistent with, something I can rely on. One thing that you need to know about running in Atlanta is it is hilly. There are just hills everywhere that you go. I've always told people that when you go to Atlanta, 
plan on going uphill at some point because that's just the way the city is built. Thankfully, they have designed the course so that you have more downhills than you do uphills. However, those uphills, still really not a lot of fun. But the scenery itself is absolutely beautiful. You get to run past the Carter Library. There are tons of outdoor sculptures. There are a lot of uh, art installations. There are uh, great graffiti murals that are out on building walls. There's just so much to look at there. The support staff was really on top of things. They were absolutely checking in on us every single time we came through an aid station, making sure that, uh, that we were hydrated, that we were feeling okay. They cheered us on. They made sure that we crossed streets carefully. So the volunteers at this race, absolutely top notch. There's an aid station every two miles and there are portables to potties at every aid station. None of the aid stations, however, provide any sort of fueling. So if you are the type that really will need a fuel during the course of the half marathon, this is something that you will have to provide for yourself. Fun fact, normally I will fuel in the middle of a half marathon. That's just something that I always do. I had the fuel on me in my pocket and yet for some reason I was so focused on pace and hydration that somehow fueling slipped my mind. I honestly do not know how that happened. So I did not fuel. However, I actually didn't really suffer from it. I was just as energetic by the end of the race as I was at the beginning of the race. And I think that's because I've been doing long runs at around two hours or so just for the past couple of months. And it gets to feel just a little bit routine for me. Now, in the future, I am definitely going to practice fueling more consistently and making sure that's an automatic thing. I don't know what was wrong with me, but somehow I ended up not fueling. But Thankfully, I did not suffer for it this time around. So as I mentioned, there are a lot of hills on this course. I do remember a particularly bad one being around the 10K mark. I tend to remember another one being somewhere around mile nine or 10. Those were probably the worst of it. The rest of them were just kind of slow and steady inclines. Um, I have actually managed to practice enough on speed work. And this is the weird thing. I haven't done a lot of hill work in the past couple of months, but I have focused a lot on speed work. And that actually translated to me being able to maintain a slow and steady pace up those hills and make it all the way to the top and then really, really enjoy those downhills. The race ended in the Piedmont Park area and it was right by the Botanical Gardens. Uh, that is where my husband met up with me. And let me tell you, that last mile, I was so tired. I was so worried I was not gonna make it. I, I started to get a little stitch in my side. Uh, I kept actually saying out loud to myself, okay, come on, Heather, let's finish this and uh, managed to make it across that finish line in two hours and 30 minutes even. That is almost four minutes faster than the last half marathon that I completed. It's not my absolute best time on a half marathon. Uh, I believe that is still at 218, but I am inching ever closer to uh, getting closer to that and just doing better every time that I do this. And again, this was with a straight run. At no point did I have to revert back to my four and one. I did walk through the aid stations. Those are really the only walk breaks that I had. So about every two miles, I would walk for about 10 seconds to long enough to get a drink and then pick back up again. I concentrated on keeping a slow pace or what another mother runner calls sexy pace and just kind of, uh, kept things loose and easy for the first four miles, picked up the speed just a little bit to just a nice, easy and steady pace for the next five miles, and then tried to push to the edge of being uncomfortable for the last 4.1 miles of the race. I don't know how fast I was actually going towards the last of the race, but I definitely could tell I was putting in some effort. So maybe the paces weren't showing it, but I definitely felt it. At the end of the race, I was able to get my medal. Uh, I went in to have my picture taken with Jeff Galloway. He stands out there and he takes pictures with every single runner as they come through. Anybody that wants a picture with Jeff, he will stop, he will talk to you for a couple of minutes and then he'll have his picture taken. He was super excited that I was shaping time off of my overall half marathon time and made everybody cheer for me. Um, 
you know, talked a little bit about uh, how they designed the, where the course was going to go. And uh, it was just a great talk. It's always so nice talking to him. He is probably one of the nicest people in sports. And then I ran over to the announcer table because India was there announcing people as they crossed the finish line. I managed to grab a selfie with her. Guys, again, I cannot reiterate just how sweet she actually is. She's awesome. So overall feelings about the race. So this is not a race that you want to tackle if you are uncomfortable with hills. Like I said, this is not a flat course by any means. There are a lot more downhills than there are uphills, but if you're not ready to tackle the couple of steep uphills that you get, then this is not one that you're going to enjoy. Thankfully, living in Arkansas, we tend to get a lot of hills on a lot of our courses. We try to do as many flat courses as we can, but sometimes we just can't avoid the hills. And so that is something that I am kind of used to. If you're not used to hills though, this may not be one that you're interested in. However, if you are looking for one with gorgeous scenery and a nice relaxed atmosphere, this is one that you're going to want to check out. It is a small race, but it has the feel of a big town race because it takes place in Atlanta. However, I did not feel that feeling of competition that you would feel at some races. Everybody was just kind of there just to enjoy having a run. We were all in it together. I ended up finishing out of uh, over 500 participants. I finished somewhere in the 300s. So again, I am a very middle of the pack runner. And there were a lot of people that were finishing right around the time that I was. Everybody was just kind of enjoying our time out on the course. There was not a ton of spectator support on the course. I attribute a lot of that to the fact that it was just so darn cold outside. But if this is a thing where you absolutely have to have that crowd to you on this may be one that you want to skip now for the most part a lot of the things that are put on by atlanta track clubs such as the peachtree 10k some of the bigger races like that you will get a lot of crowd support for that so if that's something that interests you you may want to check that out however this one is a lot more low-key and so uh, not a ton of spectators on this one so uh, i did not mind that at all again i was just kind of in my own little world and running my own race and just enjoying everything that was going on around me so uh, there were definitely a lot of runners towards the end there were um, just people out enjoying the day out in the Piedmont Park area and uh, it, it was nice just seeing other runners going about their day and then cheering for you because they realize that you have a bib on and they give you some support as you run by. Medals and swag for this were really nice as you can see it was a nice good sized medal and we have these nice t-shirts super soft, super comfortable, and uh, they do run true to size. I'm wearing a large, so it's, you know, just a little loose on me, nice and comfortable. So sizing on these, absolutely great. Printing the colors, perfect. Uh, Jeff Galloway stuff tends to be uh, all blue and green. You saw a lot of people that were on the course that were wearing a lot of the blue and green, and then uh, a lot of people that were dressed up for St. Patrick's Day as well. So again, would I recommend this race? If you are comfortable with hills, then absolutely. If you like the running in a big city without the big city crowds around you. If you want it to be just kind of um, small and intimate, but in a big city setting, this is definitely going to work for you. Overall, great weekend. Absolutely loved it. I am so glad that I did it. And I have marked Georgia off of my list for the 50 states. Also a super huge thanks to everyone who followed me on Race Joy and Trap My Progress, especially April, who kept sending me cheers throughout the whole race. I really did appreciate those. So there you go. That is my experience at the 2023 Jeff Galloway Half Marathon. Have you run this race before? Or is this one that you would consider running for yourself? Why don't you let me know down in the comments below? You can also subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you a thing and it keeps you up to date on all my running adventures, including my trip running around the 50 states. You could also follow me on social media. All the links are down in the description. You can find me across all platforms under the name Running Geek Girl. Thanks so much for watching. I'm so glad you could be here. Remember to laugh hard, run fast, and be kind. See you later.